Welcome to my All Scoops, All Survivors Dead Rising guide. This guide will be going over a good majority of the game, but it will be leaving out the ending part, which is going to be after all these survivors are saved. One thing to make clear before we get started that is super important that can mess up your run if you do this incorrectly. The only time you want to be waiting around in the security room is when a scoop is just about to start because if you are inside the security room, you will not get calls from Otis, which will prevent you from getting certain calls like the mutinies. So just whenever you're doing your waiting around or doing anything else, wait in the warehouse and then go to the security room. So during the intro sequence, you're just going to want to take as many pictures as possible. You do want to save one picture and that's going to be from Natalie and Jeff, but take photos, just try to get some pp here it'll help you get to level two which is going to be really important leveling up is going to be prioritized in this guide and so we're just doing anything we can in order to level up faster the main ones that are going to give you a lot of pp are the gas station exploding and also the girl falling off of the building if you do have leftover pictures it's not a big deal there is another way to get some pp when you're actually inside the mall once you gain control of Frank, you want to go ahead and take a picture of the, the little bulletin board. That'll be an easy PP sticker. And then you want to go ahead and check the security cameras. After that, go ahead and head into the little hallway to the entrance plaza. Go through the normal motions and then go ahead and pick up the baseball bat. And you can also take the snack as well. You want to go ahead and use the baseball bat to get the shotgun that it will be laying on the ground. After getting the shotgun, you can go back and forth between the two staircases and take pictures of the zombies. Once you start to get overrun by the group, you can go ahead and just switch staircases. This is what I would do if you have any leftover pictures and you should just aim to get as many zombies in frame as possible. Make sure to save one photo as we're going to need it very soon but once you are done go ahead and go up the stairs once you regain control of frank go ahead and go through the air duct now if you have two extra photos you can take a picture of the air duct here this is going to be useful on day three but you don't need to do it right now but if you're like me and you think you're gonna forget i do recommend going ahead and doing that as soon as possible you also want to save the photo in your picture viewer that way, if you take more pictures, it won't go away. Now you're just going to want to go ahead and rescue Jeff and Natalie as normal. And you want to go ahead and take a photo of them whenever they rejoin. Take both of them to the security room and you should be on your way to level 3. After dropping them off, go into the warehouse and there will be two mannequins that you can go ahead and destroy. I know this sounds kind of strange, but mannequin torsos are extremely strong. They will one hit zombies. So that'll be the starting weapon that we will use for the time being. Once you reach a certain point, there will be a cutscene that will play and a pistol will be forced into your inventory. You don't really need the pistol, so you can drop it. That's what I ended up doing. For some free PP, you can go ahead and just kick this little serve bot thing, or you can use the pistol or just basically hit it with anything. If you go ahead and align it, you will be rewarded with 10,000 PP, which should get you to around level 4. After doing that, head outside to the park and then head to the food court. Once you enter the food court, you'll be forced into a cutscene and a pistol will be forced into your inventory. That shotgun that you've hopefully been hanging on to, this is the time to go ahead and use it. Shotguns basically have no damage fall off from range, so it will do a lot of damage even if you are very far away from Carlito. Don't waste all your shots, but go ahead and take care of Carlito as fast as possible. After defeating him, head to this little yogurt place, or it's an ice cream place or something like that, but head there, get two yogurts and mix them together, which will make a quick step. You can also use two wines to make a quick step, but this is just the easier option. Afterwards, head to El Fresco Plaza and go into Flexen and go ahead and shoot the punching bags and you will get a nice little PP bonus. Now just follow Brad as normal and try to conserve your shotgun ammo and also your weapon durability. I would prioritize dodging zombies compared to actually fighting them. After the two cutscenes, you are on your own for a little bit. Go ahead and go upstairs, chug a quick step, and then run to the bookshop. 
around this time you should get a call from otis which we'll be talking about the kent scoop right now we're mainly focused on getting this book and then seeding one survivor the book is going to provide a bonus to survivor related activities so that we get more experience for rescuing survivors after doing that stay upstairs and go on the right side you'll find a group of zombies you want to go ahead and take these zombies out with the shotgun or whatever you have handy and make sure to hopefully have one bullet of that shotgun still because we will be giving it to bill who is located in the back of this little shop talk to bill and try to break down the barricade of boxes that he has he will get stuck on boxes and items so you want to go ahead and clear a pretty good path for him otherwise he's going to have some issues bill will then go outside of the store and he will see that there's a zombie outbreak and he will then join up with you after a short conversation i personally like to give him the shotgun here and then you're going to go ahead and make your way through alfresca plaza back to the food court before you leave, I do recommend going ahead and spinning these little racks with jump kicks or with anything basically, as it'll give you some extra PP. Afterwards, head downstairs and grab an umbrella. You can use this to go ahead and clear out a path for Bill. After doing that, go ahead and grab another umbrella, that way you have a fresh one, and just make your way to the food court. After getting to the food court, tell Bill to wait somewhere safe and away from zombies. You can also heal him up with the wine, climb up the sign and grab the Uzi, and then go ahead and shoot out the plates for an extra PP bonus. After shooting the plates, you can go ahead and run around getting the PP stickers that are scattered around the food court. Or you can just kind of hang out for a little bit. Right now, we are waiting for a scoop to spawn. It took about five real minutes in order for the scoop to actually spawn. And you'll get a call about the woman's clothing shop with two people hiding inside. Go ahead and zone into Alfresca Plaza. Tell Bill to wait in the hardware store. Afterwards, go to the barricade and destroy it. It'll make the neck part easier. Also, you can push up on the D-pad to unequip your weapon. Or you can use the Uzi in order to talk some sense into Bert. You just need to hit him about five times. But you don't want to do too much damage to him. They will both eventually join up with you and then you want to go ahead and escort them back to the food court. I chose to use the mannequin torso here and you just basically want to make sure that none of them die. And I believe Aaron can actually kill himself so you want to be extra careful with him. But go ahead and get them to the food court and then heal them up with wine from the food court. Wait in the food court for about 3 minutes and then you'll get a call about a woman in the jewelry shop tell bill and your other survivors to wait in the hardware store again this next part can get pretty messy so this is one of the harder parts of the playthrough we don't really have the best weapons so we can't clear out zombies very quickly so if you need to do this a few times that is completely okay it took me a few times in order to get but this makes everything worthwhile talk to leah a bunch and she will eventually join up with you this is really annoying because of the fact that you need to call her in order for her to climb the counter and drop down, which will call the other survivors that you have in your group as well. So this has the potential to be really nasty, but I recommend carrying Leah and you have to just hope that your survivors do not get themselves killed during this time. Like I said, this is the hardest part of the playthrough in my book, just because escorting four survivors is quite difficult when you have not very good stuff. Heal up your survivors with wine from the food court and then head into the park. You shouldn't run into the convicts here and you just want to hug like the right side wall and just try to stay away from zombies as opposed to fighting them. Afterwards, go ahead and head upstairs to Colombian Roastmasters. This is an easy way to heal up your survivors if they've taken damage and also we have to do Kent's scoop. There is a high chance that you have no photos left during this period, which all you have to do is tell your survivors to wait in Colombian Roastmasters, and then go to Cam's cameras and recharge your batteries. After completing his photo challenge, go ahead and head back to the security room. You'll get a cutscene about Queens, and then it will likely turn night during this period, which means the convicts will be out, but go ahead and focus on saving the survivors and getting them to the security room. Go ahead and zone into the security room and you will get a great PP bonus, which should get you to level 10 or 11 depending on how closely you've been following the guide. Go into the main room and you will be greeted with a cutscene. 
afterwards make sure to save as the hard part is now over i recommend grabbing some coffee creamers that are in the security room as they are really good health ups and they will be useful for later restock on mannequin torsos and make sure you have fresh ones head to colombian roast masters and mix a orange juice and a coffee creamer to make a quick step i recommend doing this twice you can drop one of your mannequin torsos and grab the katana as well as it'll be useful for this boss fight for the convicts they're not the hardest bunch but all you need to do is just go chug a quick step and just make your way over to the convict the katana should kick them out in about three to four hits and you just want to go ahead and uh swing on them you should be able to just trade blows with them to be honest and if you just keep on slashing you'll eventually kill them you can also take the gun that they have and use it on them once you actually kill the turret guy i ended up using the gun in order to finish off the fight and i thought that was a pretty easy strat after defeating the convicts go ahead and go find sophie and bring her back to the security room I recommend dropping a save here just for safety as we are going to be fighting Adam very soon. Also restock on coffee creamers, mannequin torsos, all that stuff. Make your way to Wonderland Plaza but do not enter it until you get the call about Adam. Adam's boss fight can be kind of difficult because you are so weak and you also can be one shot by a few of his attacks and so it makes things a lot more difficult than they should be. The overall strategy is to try to bait him to do either his spin attack and get one hidden or do the kind of like he leaps and then does a slash those are the easiest ways to punish you could also chug a quick step here in order to have a more forgiving time window for dodging his attacks my advice is to take your time on this fight because we actually have time to spare there will be a waiting period very soon and so even if this fight goes on for longer than you would like it won't be a big deal Make sure to examine the controls in order to see Greg and he will unlock a very useful shortcut from Wonderland Plaza to Paradise Plaza. You also want to grab both of those small chainsaws as they are extremely useful. You could get one or you could get both. I recommend getting both as it'll be extremely useful for cutting out zombies whenever you're trying to escort Greg. Eventually you'll get to the bathroom and just bring him home as normal. You'll get a call around here for the North Plaza scoop where there's a guy that you can rescue. Ignore this for now, you have plenty of time for this scoop. After reaching the security room, go into the main room and a cutscene will play. This is also a good time to get a quick save in as we are going to be saving some more survivors. I use this time in order to grab both the entertainment and the engineering books in the Bacorium. I recommend doing the same so that you don't have to worry about your weapons breaking on you. Head to the Wonderland Plaza shortcut and head to the Japanese tourist scoop. To talk to them, you need to grab the Japanese conversation book. You can drop one of the other books that you have for the time being and just talk to them for a little bit. If you time it right, you can get the PP bonus by taking a picture of them when they're bowing. And then right after they join, you can go ahead and get rid of the Japanese book. I also use this time in order to get a new small chainsaw. After getting a small chainsaw, go ahead and just guide them back to the security room. The easiest way is just to go through the Wonderland Plaza to Paradise Plaza shortcut. After getting them home, you can go ahead and restock on coffee creamers if you are low on food items. Go ahead and set your marker for Shadow in the North Plaza. You'll find David in one of the empty stores and he will join up with you after some talking. He does need a little bit of a shoulder, so go ahead and guide him to the gun shack leave david in like a corner away from zombies and then go ahead and check the door for cletus's boss fight for this fight it can be quite difficult it makes it a lot easier if you have a quick step but you just want to go ahead and trade blows with him for the most part you can hide behind these little display racks if you need to get a heal off you can actually just go ahead and run him down and then he'll throw you but it'll only do one block of damage so you can just kind of keep on doing that and you will eventually win the fight. You can also wait for him to shoot two shots and then he drinks some wine right after. So you can use that as an opportunity to go ahead and get on him. After all that, go ahead and just escort David to the security room. And after escorting him to the security room, congratulations, you have earned yourself a waiting period. I had about 30 minutes of real time waiting here. 
there's nothing to do during this period of time so go ahead and wait in the security room for image in the monitor after the cutscene head to the entrance plaza the shortcut between paradise plaza and entrance plaza will be open so you don't have to go the long way around after the cutscene you'll be in a boss fight with carlito if you have a quick step using this here can make the fight a lot easier but really all you want to do is just run him down also be careful not to get knocked down like i did but overall you just want to basically run at him and trade blows as goes with many of the bosses in this game after the cutscenes you'll be teleported back to the security room once you gain control of frank you want to take pictures of jesse you're aiming to get 500 pp for an erotica photo it'll be part of kent's quest later make sure to save it just for safety and head over to sion's grocery store there's tons of food here so if you do need to heal up feel free to do that the boss fight will not start until you check the door so you have plenty of time to heal up or just get supplies before the fight steven isn't a really hard boss fight all you really want to do is guide him in one direction and then go into the opposite direction and swing on him you don't want to be behind him as he can do a mule kick on you so keeping those in mind that's basically the strategy for the fight after the fight go ahead and head to the lover's scoop in wonderland plaza you'll have to talk to tanya and ross and you'll have to alternate between talking to them Ross will ask for a gun eventually. Do not give it to him as he will kill himself with it. So just keep on talking and alternating and eventually they will join up with you. It seems like Tanya's AI likes to just follow Ross so you can go ahead and carry Ross and Tanya should follow. You should be able to get another chainsaw here as well and you just want to clear out a path by placing Ross down and then just cleaving through the zombies. If at any point during this time you find a queen, I highly recommend picking it up as it'll be extremely useful very soon. And you'll want to make your way to the Wonderland Plaza to Paradise Plaza shortcut that you should know by now. Bring them to the security room as normal. After bringing them to the security room, make sure to talk to Jessie to give her the medicine. This is kind of an easy thing to forget, so I do recommend doing that. And also, if you haven't taken those photos already, of the air duct and of jesse i really do recommend doing that drop a quick save and then go outside and you'll find pamela and heather use the queen that you have or small chainsaw the zombies around her trying to be careful as i think about three hits will kill her so it's extremely risky to use the small chainsaw that's what the queen is for talk to them both and then just bring them back to the security room I recommend saving here as this next part's timing is pretty tight so go ahead and save and head to the hatchet man case cliff isn't the hardest psychopath in the world but honestly he's one of the more annoying ones he likes to run around and go through these little vents his pathing can be a little weird at times but you just basically want to guard the vents with your life and have some healing items on standby in case you do take too many hits Whenever he's up on one of the racks, you can go ahead and throw an item at him in order to get him down from there. But really just run him down, try to get as many hits as you can on him. He does decent damage, but you should be able to just kind of heal through it and eventually you'll take him out. Head to the empty store right next to Chrysalips. You will go ahead and see three survivors within here. After a short conversation, they will join up with you. There is also a book that increases health gain from food by like 100%, so that is something that you might want to keep in mind for future reference. Head outside and just guide them back to the security room as normal. After getting them to the security room, go ahead and go to the main room and you will be just in time for the professor's pass. It's really important that you have Jesse's erotica photo, so make sure you have that ready and head to Columbian Roast Masters in Paradise Plaza for the photo challenge. You also want to grab a pie at Columbian Roast Masters as we will need it for Ronald, and he's in Jill's sandwiches right next to the movie theater. I went ahead and dealt with Ronald first and then brought him to Columbian Roast Masters for the Kent scoop. You'll also get a call for the Above the Law scoop around this time. You should be here at the perfect time to talk to Ken and show him your picture. After dealing with Ken, go ahead and guide Ronald back to the security room. There's a case that we've been kind of neglecting, which is the coward. We are going to go ahead and take care of that right now. 
make sure to go from Paradise Plaza to Entrance Plaza to Alfresca Plaza. Because if you go to the Food Port or Wonderland Plaza, it will mess up everything. So just make sure to not do that. Talk to Gordon and then throw a box at him once you've talked to him a little bit. He will then join up with you. Guide him back to the Entrance Plaza and then to Paradise Plaza. Once again, avoiding the Food Court and Wonderland Plaza here. Once you zone in, you'll likely be greeted by the Cultists. This is a really important reason on why you should save right here, as they can put you to sleep and take all of your belongings, which will basically make it impossible to recover the run. Leave through them and basically just deal with them. Gordon should be able to survive on his own for just a little bit. Leave Jennifer inside the box and make sure that Gordon is okay and heal him up if needed. Afterwards, go ahead and get Jennifer out of the box and guide them both home. You don't really have any time for anything else, so just wait in the security room for another source. After that happens, go ahead and head to Wonderland Plaza for the Above the Law scoop. While you're on your way to Above the Law, you should see Nick and Sally hanging from this little mascot here. Use the small chainsaw to get rid of the zombies and just throw something at them to get them down. Talk to them and then they'll join up with you and then head to the Above the Law scoop. The Joe boss fight is one of the easier fights in the game in my book. The only thing you have to worry about is collateral damage with the survivors that are nearby. So you just want to kind of lure her away from the survivors and then just kind of go to town on her. And she should be dead within like, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds. After killing Joe, go ahead and free all the survivors and then head to the security room. You are going to have to really babysit them here just because you have so many, but you can get another small chainsaw if yours is broken and use that to clear the way of zombies. After finally getting them home, go ahead and head outside to Paradise Plaza. You should get a call for Mark of the Sniper, which is a case with uh, some survivors and also a boss fight. So whenever you get the call, just go ahead and head out for it in the entrance plaza and you can take the short way. This boss fight is no different than the Carlito boss fight, but except it's probably a little bit easier. They do less damage than Carlito's sniper, so you can kind of just rush them and mow them down. I was able to kill two of them very quickly, and then the other one didn't last very long either. Should be really quick. After that, head to this little cosmetic store and you'll find Wayne. Talk to him for a little bit and then he'll join up with you. Go downstairs and go to the grandma's kids place. In here you'll find Jolie and you'll also find a bag of chips. I recommend getting this as you're going to need food for Ronald and this is an easy way to get it done. After talking to her for a little while, go ahead and try to leave the store and then she'll want to join you. Head to Lady Space on the second floor in the entrance plaza for Rachel. She'll only join you if she sees Jolie so you just need to make sure that you have her. You can take a picture of when they're hugging in order to get a little bit of a PP bonus and then just talk to them again and she'll join up with you. Then go to Ned's Knickknackery, which is right across and you'll find Floyd. You'll have to talk to him for a pretty long period of time and then eventually he'll join up with you. I recommend carrying him as it makes it a lot easier in my opinion and you just want to go ahead and head to the security room. While on your way to the security room, you should get a call about Ronald's appetite, which is why we grabbed the chips from earlier, so make sure to give that to him. After getting him the chips, now is a good time to save, so I recommend doing that. Now it's finally time to do the girl hunting case. Isabelle can be kind of an annoying boss fight because of her motorcycle. My biggest advice is to just circle around and try to bait her into going in one direction and then slashing her a few times. Her damage is not the highest, so you can trade blows decently well and not be too worried about it. After the Isabella fight, you'll have to wait around for around 20-ish real minutes. Afterwards, just go ahead and kick off the zombie off of Isabella, and you will be on your way to the next part. So you just need to go ahead and get Isabella to the security room. You should have some time, and you'll also run into Kendall on the way. He will shoot you, but if you just get close enough and then talk to him, he will join up with you. Get both Kindle and Isabella to the security room. After getting them to the security room, now is a good time to save. Before Santa Cabeza expires, we do have one thing we need to get done. Head outside and you should get a call about Floyd wanting some wine. 
go ahead and grab a wine and then head right back to the security room. Give Floyd the wine and then wait for Santa Cabeza to expire in the security room. And after saving, go ahead and head to a strange group. Sean is not a really hard boss at all in my opinion. Every time that I fought him, he just kind of kneels down and takes a bunch of hits and he's just gone within a matter of seconds. So just rush him down and make sure you have some heals on you just in case things go wrong. Afterwards, make sure to clear out the cultist group that is uh, outside of the theater and then save all the survivors, including the one that is inside the like closet or like warehouse kind of thing. As normal, get these guys to the security room. This is one of the harder escorts because the mall has a lot more zombies than before, but just do your best to heal them whenever necessary and just try to clear out a really good path for them as they are quite dumb. Now is a good time to save if you haven't saved in a while and we also have to go to the food court to get Gil. Talk to Gil a bunch and then afterwards try to leave and then he'll join with you. He is extremely drunk so you need to kind of give him a shoulder. By now you should know the drill, bring him to the security room as normal. Right now is one of your last times to get that picture of the air duct so make sure to take it and then also save it in your camera roll. Head to the long haired punk by going to the Wonderland Plaza shortcut. Paul is just like any other psychopath, you just want to mow him down as fast as possible. I was able to basically kill him within a few swings and then I just needed one last swing to finish the fight off. The fight should last probably less than 30 seconds if you get good RNG or if, as long as he doesn't get too far away from you. After the fight, use the fire extinguisher and basically just aim it at him and you can save both Paul and the two survivors that he has hostage. Bring Paul and the other two survivors to the security room as normal. You should get a call about a guy hanging out in a cosmetic shop in Wonderland Plaza. We will do that later, but you want to make your way to the gun shop and this is your very last chance. You need to make sure you have that picture of the air duct because this is when we're going to use it. Open the door and try to go in. You'll start to get shot at and then just leave and then one person will come outside to talk to you. After a very long conversation, they will eventually join up with you. While you are here, make sure to grab a handgun and do not use it. This will be important for a mutiny later. Bring them through the security room and make sure to save. We still have a little bit of time before the last resort expires and we have two survivors in Wonderland Plaza to save. One is a scoop and the other one is not a scoop. You'll find Susan on top of a little soccer ball and you can use a queen to easily clear it out. And then you'll find Leroy in this little cosmetic shop across the way. Talk to both of them to get them to join you and then guide them back to the security room. Susan, I found that holding her hand is probably the easiest option but some people don't like that. Around this time, you should hear Carlito on like the intercom. This is your cue to basically get to the security room as fast as possible. The timing is pretty tight on this, but if you do make it, you are good to go and you can save. Head to Colombian Roastmasters for the very last Kent scoop. Otis has insane timing and you'll have to take a call at the start of this fight. So just do your best to dodge Kent while you take the call and then you just want to slash him pretty much. If you get on top of him, a few hits and he'll be dead, but you do want to be careful as he is extremely deadly. The main thing you have to be careful for is his flying kick as it does quite a lot of damage, but there is orange juices at the Columbian Roastmasters for healing. After the fight, free up Tad and bring him to the security room. You'll get a call about a girl in the CD shop in Paradise Plaza. This is the very last survivor, so pat yourself on the back. The survivor related activities are basically over. This is another mutiny which you have to do before you leave the security room as I'm pretty sure you'll end up losing it if you leave. So you just need to make sure to talk to Kendall. It'll be a lengthy conversation but eventually he will decide not to leave the security room which is good for you because he will bring a bunch of survivors with him and you'll lose out on a perfect run. Set your marker for a woman in despair, and this is the very last survivor related activity. So let's go ahead and get this over with. She will be inside the CD shop right across from the toy shop in Paradise Plaza. She's kind of hiding, but she will join up with you if you progress the story to where we currently have the story. 
go ahead and get her home and then you can now get rid of the book that boosts survivor related activities as it will be useless now and honestly that's really it so the only things that you have left to do are the main story and then the mutinies there's going to be three more mutinies to do it's going to be paul's present at 5 p.m simone the gunslinger at 8 p.m and cheryl's request at 9 p.m you should have plenty of time and as long as you are waiting in the warehouse instead of the security room you will get all the calls and you will simply fulfill the request for paul's present you just have to talk to him for cheryl's request you have to take pictures of her and then for simone the gunslinger you have to give her the handgun that we got earlier the rest should be completely easy you just have to do the main story and you'll do overtime mode and you'll be good to go I know this guide isn't completely from start to finish, but it should be enough in order to get you in the general direction you're supposed to go. And yeah, so if this was helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and good luck on your run.